Hello, friends. Hope you had a good weekend. We're going to chat about importing data today. Um, there's a, a lot of different scenarios where you may need this. Uh, Rando Martin should be jumping on, and I think he has a specific use case where he is he's he had his existing site on WordPress. He built out a site on WordPress for chiropractors, a learning management system for chiropractors. And he's, he, you know, he, he kind of went the path of learn, like he taught WordPress to himself, uh, built out an entire learning management system. I think kind of the first of its kind too. And here he is, Rando. Hey buddy, can you hear me? All right, while you're figuring that out, I'm just going to chat, chat about you. <laughs> I think you can hear me, but I'm going to talk about you. Can you not hear me? I don't have your sound. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Not if you can hear me. No, huh? Hang on. Let me see if I'm coming through on the uh, screen. Maybe it's me. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good on I'm good on on my end here. I don't have it yet. All right. So while he's figuring that out, like I said, first of its kind learning management system. There is a re-education or a recertification process that chiropractors need to go to go through uh, every. So often. I hear sound now, Rando. Yeah, working on it. <laughs> I switched browsers, and it's probably not the best time to... There it is. Okay. There we go. All right. Hey. <laughs> Loud and clear. Cool. You look good, man. Look at that. I like the background. Yeah, man. This was your uh, your inspiration. Figured yeah. out how... You remember? You teach me how to work the mic and the... Uh, yeah, um... I'm the video guy, and I have all these technical difficulties going on your stream. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of uh, introing Cairo CE and you're kind of building, you're, you're migrating, I think, off of WordPress into Bubble. Mm -hmm. And I think what you wanted to chat about, you know, catch up to, it doesn't have to be all business, but um, wanted to chat about maybe getting some of the data from your WordPress database into Bubble, like what the best way to do that is. Yeah. And I actually did a little homework to wrap my head around the best way of doing that and it's it all comes down to uh two holes that need to be filled and if i were an excel wizard i may be able to fill them and just do a straight import and everything be automatically linked but i know enough about api workflows that that may be an option as well where okay. bubble does the linking from a background workflow. Um, so I actually created three test uh, spreadsheets with the three data types that need to talk to each other. And uh, it's all loaded in right now. I just need to, to link them. So um, we can jump into that at some point, which is the plan for today, but yeah. Sure, so is all the data already in Bubble? It, I put sample data uh, to protect real users, you know, privacy and stuff, and to simplify it for me to like really understand the fundamental like idea of what's happening. So, essentially, um, you know, the unique ID in Bubble, each thing has a unique ID. Well, for a user database, each unique ID is essentially that user, right? Without the unique ID, it's just text. So WordPress has its own thing called a WP ID, WordPress ID. Um, and it's essentially the page number because WordPress works in pages, static pages. Right? Yeah. So if you join a WordPress site that's mature and old, your WordPress ID might be like 50,453. 
you know, 50453 would be your user ID. And that would mean 50,452 pages have been made prior to your interaction. Oh, so it's cumulative, like for across all WordPress yes. pages. So wow. If I create a course that adds in a, that that bumps my current number at to to like you know another twenty or thirty pages because I have each quiz question is a page, each quiz is a page, each lesson is a page, each course is a page, and they're all talking to each other. There's a tab. I have a, a little tab. It's called tab sets where you put, you display data in a tab and each tab is its own page because it, it needs something to reference. So where I, I don't know enough about databases to comment, but I know enough about bubble to know it, it's so straightforward with bubble. And I actually did a user export in WordPress and there's, you know how it goes like A through Z in columns and then it does AA? Yeah, then, uh, almost, right? like a, almost like an Excel spread. It is, a, yeah, Excel spreadsheet. When I downloaded my user uh, database that had everything associated with every user, there it, it, it was at like three letters. So 26 letters times 26 times 26. That's how many things are associated with one user and it, and you're just scrolling and scrolling and scroll. It's, it's so convoluted, but if you know, that's why I can't say anything bad about it. Cause I don't actually know. I just know how freaking straightforward bubble is. And I don't want to say easy, but I want to say straightforward because it's like, it, it's, it's linear in it's in what you tell it to do. Right, like all computers, but there's no. I I, I don't know. It, it it just works with the human brain so much better, in my opinion. <laughs> it's just that's, that's so if, you're, if you're human, it's the better place to start. Have you gone through like so? You said that you you've done an export of your of all of the uh, the user data that was in WordPress. Are you saying that the like the export of that is like is over 90 columns wide way more than 90 yeah oh wow okay so i can see and why we, that would be a problem like a, as a straight import into bubble because you'd have to yeah, create all those well, columns because, above, because what it does is every single time a user starts a new lesson it creates a column and that user has to match with that column but there's like a grand database where it's like this user's activity so every single user has every single user's activity but if there's a if there's a value associated with that column and that user then it then it populates but when you have hundreds of users taking 10 20 30 courses you have 300 columns that all users have <laughs> And that all goes into the same table as opposed to like a separate data type there's, that there's that a bunch of back. data types. But when I did the export, it pulled all data types of referring to users. Uh, so it did a mass exodus of all information linked to that user oh, or to shit. users at all. Okay. Dude. I could see why this is a tricky problem, but it, all, but it boils down. What's really nice is I need users, first name, last name, address, email. It's all straightforward, right? I can throw all that information out. The only and, and even all of the act, the user activity in all of those thousands of extra columns, I don't need to decipher because the way I built the data structure within Bubble is you have a user and you have an associated uh, lesson activity and a course enrollment. Those are your two things. So. When you're enrolled in a course, it creates a new course enrollment in the data type. And that course enrollment is almost like a ticket. Think of it like a ticket to a show, ticket mm -hmm. to a class, whatever. And on that ticket, you have whatever lessons are associated with that course, um, as, as well as all of your completion data and all of, all of the data that is relative to your attempts at that course that time. And what's cool about that is it allows you to have two 
course enrollments for the same course. Because my problem right now is I have a renewal period where chiropractors want to get their licenses renewed, but they've already bought the courses. But they're allowed to take them again. The same exact courses. They could take these same courses for 10 years, 10 times, and get their license renewed 10 times over and be done. Same but certificate. My, same, but same course and the, and the slur. It's not like it's not course. like it expires after they've taken it, right? When when they take it, it applies for that, you know, renewal period. And when the renewal period restarts, they need to get 40 hours again. Or every state's different. But we'll say 40 hours in two years. And they can take 40 hours again, the same 40 hours. Over and over, every two years. The exact same course. It'd be redundant, and most doctors wouldn't want to watch the same stuff over again. A lot of doctors don't even care. But for me to be able to sell a course to a doctor again, they have to create a new account. So I have a handful yeah. of people who've already created new accounts and bought courses again. And the same user now has two user IDs. And thankfully, their, their license number is the same. So I can do some manual. There's a lot of manual fixing I'm going to have to do on the spreadsheet before importing. And that's why I didn't want to share the or even use the real data in this example, because ultimately what I wanted to do was talk about like the, like how to link, how to associate data uh, after import. Okay. Like, I guess that's my main thing. Okay. So I can show you, I can share my screen and you can actually see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Let's take a look. Well, uh, one question before you do that, can you, do, does a doctor who's recertifying, do they, pay for the course again every year? Do they need to pay oh, yeah. for it? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a great business model for you, isn't it? Dude, right? <laughs> yeah, no, every, it, it's a recurring thing. Like they have to do it. And it's, I mean, well, well, it's their license. They're making, they're using it to make money. Why would they? So that's where you're paying it. When I, when I was redoing the currency chir structure from um, WordPress to bubble, and I'm making these breakthroughs early on, and solving fundamental problems with just understanding how data structures can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. When I, when, when I changed it from you own this course is in your account to this course enrollment is in your account. Right. 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 You, only have okay. one. you know what I mean? That's the difference. Yeah. You, you have a list of courses. You can't have the two like, and I, I learned that later on uh, bubble D dupes. In lists, you can't have the same thing twice in in a list. A list of, a, a like a text list or a course list or anything or a, a data type list. You if you have a list of something, you can't have multiple of them. Really? Are you sure about that? Oh wait, oh wait. You mean as a data type, right? Like as a relational, like. No, you... like if I wanted to print a list of users and their first name. If I just wanted to see all my username, like let's say I um, create a list of my hundred users, just their first name. I want a list. So like Adam, comma, Andrew, comma, you will not get two Johns. You will not get two Adams. I'm you, not sure if that's true, but let's, let's take a look at that. I, let, yeah, let's, I, well, we can dig into that a little bit, but yeah, I, do, well, that was, I, I encountered that problem because I needed to print a list of states and because there was because Florida was in there so many times. I only got Florida once. I needed Florida 50 times and Florida. They, it only it's called de duping. We can look into it, but that was. Yeah, I want to make sure we we start with the the, the thing that you want to get done today. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like how do we link two tables together via uh, an API workflow, right? That's well, really what ultimately, the... that's my main thing that I'd love to wrap. My All right. Up. So let's start. Let's start there. Let's see how far we can get with that. And then we'll check out that de duping stuff, because I if I'm yeah, let, let's start there. Then we'll go down the deduping rabbit hole. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's a cool. Uh, oh no, I gotta. My, I, I can't share my screen until I quit. Let me, let me rejoin real quick. No problem. I think what he's saying is that you can't have more than one, one like thing from another data type in a list. I think, but you can certainly have like if, if it's just a state. Yeah, I, I don't know. 
we'll, we'll figure that out. Hey. Okay. Can you hear me? Got you. Cool, cool. All right, let me share, share screen. Do this one. This, one. Yeah, this sounds a little choppy, and I'm hearing an echo now, though. Oh, hold on. Okay, that should fix it. Better? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, <laughs> I'm hearing myself. Hear myself. You hear yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Audio is. How about now? Yo. Nope. Good. Nothing. That's good. Okay. Okay. There. Okay. All right. So that's my little dude. Very right. nice. That's All the right, man, so, huh? Sorry, what? That's the man, huh? That's my dude, yeah. yeah. Growing up is wild. So this is uh, all users. Uh, I think I can actually open this up. And does it? Do I have all my columns? No, I, I deleted. I I streamed streamlined this down. Um, that's the all users export. This is the course report uh, from Learn Dash. And if you notice, there's a, a WP user ID, and that's this. Mm -hmm. um, the course ID steps completed. This is all built in to Learn Dash, but I essentially watered it down to these three. So you have course enrollments. This is within my data types, by the way. So I'm going to. Go here, do one of these, go to data. So we have, sorry, user. Uh, da, 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 new user and new lesson activities. Okay. So these are my new users, whatever, Hollywood. They have a cover photo, date registered. Um, my son's name is Jack Martins. So there's Jack Martins. Is that? Can you read that? Is that? Uh, it's a little. It's a little small, but um, I don't think it matters all that much. I can read it. I just got to get a little closer. There we go. That's that's a lot yeah. better. I mean, all right. Well, it's just basic, right? User fields, and they match, right? The you know zip cover photo all matches this. You know these actual names here. Um, the big thing, that the absolute key here is the WP ID, right? So when you import a new user, it automatically creates a unique ID. Mm -hmm. So I've done that already. And if you see in here, app data, this is our test one, test two, test three. These are my test users, all right? And the reason the WP ID is the key here because... When I go to uh, a course enrollment, uh, these are the course enrollments. So you have your lessons completed, you have your course, you have your lessons available. And, and th there's some assumptions that are being made because um, thankfully all my courses only have one lesson <laughs> and it, the lesson is the title of the course. So I can copy and paste these. I can literally say, for the um, course enrollments, uh, we'll go to data types. We have um, so the course title. This is text, right? Lessons completed is a list of texts, uh, but it's only one lesson because these all only have one lesson. Um, the course, right, is a course data type, but the course title is exactly the same. So Bubble will automatically associate this text and turn it into a course. So all of these are taken care of. Um, lessons available is a list of lessons, lessons completed, list of lessons. And the status is, uh, course or lesson status option set, which turns out to be the word complete. 
Um, and then there's and, a WTID. And Bubble picks that Bubble pick. You said that Bubble creates a course. Uh, it'll create a, a, a thing in course if if it if the column is is a, is a course. Like if you import this, you're saying that. And, and you know what? Watch. I'll I won't actually import. I'll just go up to the point of importing. Um, I'll upload new upload. So I'm going to upload a course enrollment. I'm going to pick a file on my desktop, which is new course enrollment. And if you know it, see course title is the course enrollments course title. The text field in the CSV satisfies what this is looking for. Oh, wow. That's cool. I actually didn't even know that it would do that. I didn't think you it was that, that okay, smart. So if, no, if that's you great. Upload lessons completed. This is a list of texts. And you would say lessons completed. And the delimiter is you could do a comma, you could do tab, you could do this. And this is how you separate in your CSV between your list separate and courses. Bubble. Yeah, right? nice. Or separate course, lessons, rather. Course becomes the course data type. But within the course data type, there's a whole bunch of fields. So that text is referencing the name of the course. Because, That's awesome. Isn't that cool? So in the course data type, there's the text field name. And text field links to the text in the CSV, as long as it's perfect. It's got to be exact, sure. That makes so, that makes sense. So this is a, a very valuable association. Same thing here. Lessons available. The field to match is the name of the lesson. Lessons completed. Technically, I could put a lesson ID and simplify the typing and put just a number and associate that instead of the title. But the title is good enough, especially if it's exact. But if it's not exact, it won't find it because it's it's finding two texts that are exactly the same and then it creates and it associates the lesson now the option set is the same go for that if it yeah because the, the option set is see the status is uh the stat it's just the status is referencing text right because at the end of the day it's text and the You're csv right. is only text Right. So you can't have a course that's a course data type without ultimately finding a text delimit or variable within that data type to refer to. And I assume that status just matches. It has to be a one to one match with the display, right? If it's completed yeah, status or whatever. Is uh, oh, which status? Course lesson status. So this 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 right here, these letters are what it's looking for. Nice. All right, that's pretty sweet. That's actually way smarter than I thought it was. I didn't know that you could. So you can upload a relationship. I don't. Even, what do you even need the the API workflows for? Here's what I need. Here's my issue. I have a list of completions. Every time someone's ever completed a course in, in my WordPress site, it gives me a list of completions. If I only had one course, it would be the same course over and over and over again. Um, the the association I'm having a hard time with. Okay, I'm just gonna simplify this here. Um, do, do, make it bigger for you. Do, do, do. There we go. Okay, so in this case, Florida laws and rules. Four times this course has been completed. Five, five times by the user one, two, seven, six, and three. These are mm -hmm. five different people. In my application, there will never be, it will never look like this. I can't have the same user completing the same course twice. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. I can't have, I can't have this with two one one ones here because when they when they have the course they have it and they can't take it again so it's safe to say that th this list of courses are unique to each person which is referenced here so what i need to do which i already have in my database is a list of the two three four hundred course completions all with 
WPIDs. What I need to do is say, and I literally wrote it down in this right here, um, the course enrollments has to equal search for course enrollments. So this is all my new course enrollments where the WPID is the user's WPID. Mm -hmm. Now, I need this to happen for every single user. I need to find it, take a user, and then search for course enrollments and associate, and, and then, uh, or I think it would be actually, instead of equals, it would be uh, set list would be the term. I think that's the, I think set list, because it's a list, it, it'll be a list of course enrollments. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing goes with lesson activities. Um, the lesson activity is, because one course can contain multiple lessons, you need to know which lessons are done and which ones aren't. So that's where lesson activities, if, if one course had one lesson, I wouldn't need lesson activities, but because they do, I need to do, you basically need to do this again for lesson activities. Got you. So you've, you've set up the query here and that, that makes perfect sense. I'm, I'm following you, but what's supposed to happen once it does find a match? What's supposed to happen is, the user data type, not associated vendor, course enrollments. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. This is empty. I can I can I cannot populate this without doing some Excel magic and taking this whole list and saying Give me a list with each W, wherever there's one, 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 add all of these titles into it, this cell. Got you. Okay. So you want to take all of the, all of the one, one, ones in that list, which, which associate, is associated to a user, which you have in the user table and populate the list of courses that they've completed. And you also need to do that with the lessons. CRT yes. lessons complete. Okay. Right. So right here, you can see that one, 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 one has five completions here what i need if i knew how to do this automatically copy and then take this cell put a comma here paste then the upload could handle it but you see what i'm doing right now i'm manually associating uh what is it one two three four what i need it to look like in my uh sheet here is this oh, okay so the value of this cell is my associated courses does that make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. and there's a comma separating it and if i uploaded this cell i would have my association i don't want to go through and copy and paste each one of course not of course so okay but <laughs> it, it's it's a question of is this worth doing in excel right like figuring out what that expression looks like or is it is it better to do it in bubble uh, with the back end workflow? And uh, I think that, I mean, it really could, we could do it either way. Um, I, I feel like, I feel like it's funner to do it in bubble. Well, maybe. It, I knew bubble is capable. I know it's capable. I just don't know how. And Excel is, I don't know. I, I, the I, funny thing is the, the logic is going to work a lot uh, like, pretty much the same way you know it's just like a different syntax that we're going to build huh um Interesting thought. let's go let's okay so we have to populate the and now in the um well how are we going to test the the workflow because i think you have real data in here nope oh no that's still test data right all test data and what do you all have my... oh, these are all my okay. lesson activities these are imported Right, they have my WP ID here, five 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 one 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 four four two two two. Gotcha. Okay, so we've got the WP ID, and and can we just check the? Is it the course data type? Yeah, Do you course want to start enrollment. with that one. Course enrollments. Right. So basically, yeah, when you have your WP ID, we need to search for all course enrollments 
that match the current user's WP ID. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's and do it. The let's... user has a WP ID, and it's something also I'll know if there's a WP ID present. I know the user came from WordPress, and if there ah. isn't, it's a new user on Bubble. All right. All right. Let's see if we can't figure this out. I have a few ideas on how to approach this. Um, I think I understand what you want now. Cool. Um, okay. So let's go. Let's check our. Let's check our back end workflow tab. Okay, let's click here. So have you have you tried building this out yet? No. I okay. it's it's I don't know enough of I this API the API workflows I built here were from YouTube tutorials and I they pretty much work but I, it, I just don't have a gra gra grasp on it yet. Understood, understood. Okay, so let's first think about how we're going to capture the how we're going to capture the user list, right? So the the th the field that we'd be looking for is like if the course completion is empty, right? We want to fill that with information. The, right? associ the associated en enrollments is what we're looking to do. So we're on the user data type. There's a course enrollments. Yeah. Right, and whatever's in that course enrollment is what it is. I just no, need it. But what I'm saying is, we have to we have to create a list of users to run this action on, right? Oh, like, it's already this. My user list is the list. Yeah. Right, but we have to set like Bubble doesn't know that. Like in the back end, right now, like in order to create that API workflow, we have Sorry. to. Yes. Tell Bubble what that list is. I see. I see where your brains are. They, mine weren't there. <laughs> got you. Got you. Got you. No problem. No problem. All right. So if we say like, yeah, go to new API workflow. I think, and I think this list. How big is your your real list? I'm because that will depend on how we set this up. Of users. Yeah. Uh, and course completions too. Uh, let me see. I think I have twelve hundred users. Ooh, that's not bad. Okay, we probably can do this in a list. That's that's actually gonna make this easier. Course report. I have forty seven eighty one. Mm, that's a little big. Okay, we're gonna have to use a recursion. That's okay. Forty seven eighty one is the amount of lessons that have been completed. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, will you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go back to bubble here let's call this um now whatever you think is best here um well Pop we're, we're doing um users course and user course enrollment got you just make the when you whenever you it, you have to treat like a api workflow like a back end i mean like a, like a url so just make it no spaces and all lowercase really yeah why you're, you're essentially creating a URL with this. You're creating an endpoint. Uh, so someone could actually like run this workflow externally from your app if you don't, you know, if you like leave the authentication settings oh, as a default. Oh, Yeah, yeah. So this is an endpoint now in your app. It doesn't create like API documentation necessarily for you. Sure. Uh, but it is, it is something that could be run by a third party. Huh. So you're essentially like what you're doing here is basically like running an API call on your or you're calling your server, but from your own app. It's a little bit weird, like people. And I think even just like API, like when you think about an API, you don't think about something that's internal, but you're like running an API call on your own server. When you, when yeah, you're, you're, you're like, adding a loop. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So, all right. So we need to let's go first. How, I'm trying to think of the. I don't know if we run this from the front end or we run it. I think we could probably run this from the data tab. Uh, hit click here to add another action. Let's, let's not do any parameters yet. And data, let's go make changes to a, a list. Should we do right? a list? I want to do a list because it's easier, but I feel like we're not going oh, to Oh, you might have to run a thing multiple times instead of a list. I think we're gonna have to run a thing multiple times. I think your that's, list is yeah. That's I I think so too. Be, because yeah yeah. I don't know. You you know more than me. But when I think of this, it's like I think of an expression. I think of like creating an, a button, and I log in as that user. I can create a button to do this, 
And now I have to log into as a new user and create and hit that button and a new user and hit that button. That's essentially what we're doing. Um, uh, like imagine if on, I created in my account, associate courses, I could create a button that searches current user searches all course enrollments and then add list. I could literally, I could do this as an action with a button. I could actually, as I'm saying this right now, I don't even need to do this necessarily. I could just have this button where if someone's like, where's my courses, click this button, it'll, it'll populate them. Okay. Yes. You are thinking about that in, in a, in an interesting way. Yeah. That, that you can do that too. You're essentially doing that, but that, that would be like the manual way to do it from the front end. Right, but it, yes, it, and it, each user is capable of hitting a button in that that workflow as written here would execute for that user. And yes, and now we need to do it again. Exactly, and again, exactly, and again. So, so I would say it's make change to thing, right? Yeah, you're really making a change to a user. Yes, what you just said is correct. Actually, what you said you just said is important because it really breaks down what it is that we're doing. Instead of doing it manually, like you just described, we're automating this, and this is, and that's good when the list is big. Like your list of users, I don't think is is big enough, uh, or not that it's not big enough, but it's not um, it's not going to be a very heavy data operation. Uh, but for something a little bit longer, if you if you were importing like a million users, you probably do it this way. You probably would would or wouldn't do it. You would. You would. We're we're I mean, gonna do it. We're gonna do it anyway, but I'm. But you're you're thinking about it the right way. What you just said makes a lot of sense. You could theoretically log in as a user, use that fix logic. Fix my account. Built. Push the fix button, and your account just all of a sudden appears with all all of your stuff. Yes. And we just need to do that automatically. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Yep. So, right. thing to change. It's not gonna be current. Is it gonna be current user? No, because you're not really going to be logged in as anybody, especially if you're running a backend workflow. It doesn't. Re it won't recognize a current user. So it would be do a search for users. Where okay, so this is this is where we would add the parameter WPID. Is it? It's actually a number. Um, it's not a okay. Shoot, I might have just answered my own question here. Look at this. Search for users. No, that's not right. Where the users WPID equals do a search for No, I'm sorry. Wait. I'm lost again. All right. Let, let, let's just backtrack a little bit. You were on yeah. the right track. Um but I think where you got caught up was that you were going to pass a WPID and then match it to a user. Um, let's let's do this a, a little bit differently, just a little bit. We, we're looking essentially. We want to. The end goal is to populate the that the empty field that's in your user table that's called course completed, right? Yeah. Yep. So we can, course enrollments. Yeah. Course enrollments. So if we think about this as a loop, right? You're going to have to cycle through every user in your user table. And, yep. and, and the thing to look for is not going to be the WPID yet. It's going to be whichever course completed is empty, is not complete. No, 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 no. It's whatever, whatever, whatever course enrollments contains the, that user's WPID. It's not whether it's complete or not. I need completed and incomplete. I, I, use, I use the wrong word. Not complete, but the, the, the field is empty. Right, because we're trying to populate that field, aren't we? Um, no, because some users don't have. Some users are just users without courses. A lot of users signed up and didn't buy a course. What I need is to find. I need to scan my course enrollments. Whatever course enrollments I do have, find the WPIDs that match the current user. And, and and add that list to the to the user of that WPID. I'm me? not sure. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I I feel like we're almost saying this. Well, okay, you're. 
you're thinking of it as the the WPID, right? Like you're you're trying to match that, but we're still creating the list. I don't think we're at the point yet where we're matching WPIDs. We're still we still have to get the all right, you know what? Maybe build it. <sighs> well, I, I guess what you're saying is all when I import the users, when I created these users, all of their associated everythings are empty. So yes. you could find that. But then there's also this test here, right? These are all my random tests that aren't associated. You know, like, I guess they'll populate, but they also don't have a WPID. Where would it be? It's not showing up in this, but it's here. Um, so, yeah, I, I, we'll hear you out. I, let's see what, let's see what you, you come up with. Don't, don't let me rain on your parade here. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm kind of curious because maybe I'm misunderstanding. I'm actually curious to see which way you go with the WPID. Because my to... thought is if you can find – you have a list of enrollments. That's all that matters. Find the WPID, which is the user ID. Give me all the same user IDs that match the current user's user ID. That's what the, the expression would be if it were a button, you know? Like but you're, but you're, but the thing, the, the only thing that I think the, the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm running this, this operation on a list of users. I'm not starting with the course enrollments. I think you're starting with course enrollments. Okay. Now, am I wrong? Because no, that's, that's, that's an important point. You're, you're, you're totally right. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the course enrollments and I'm adding the list to the user that matches that list. But for your, you're saying, give me a list of users where the course enrollment is empty and then or or even just take the wpid from that from that first user search that w that wpid in the course enrollments and give me oh, everything no, it, would, it would be it would be uh what's the expression it would be intersects with intersect uh, yeah. that it would be intersects with the course enrollments WPID. That might be the that might be the expression to use. Yeah, that that may that may be I it. Think that's it. You're totally right. So start with. It would be. Thing to change would be, search for a current user. Search for, because there's no current user here. Search Unless we're, if we were doing this on the front end, then then there would be a current user. Oh, I see. Okay, each items. WPID intersects with do a search for course enrollments each item's WPID uh, wait. list of text all right so you've got you've got just just to kind of call this out you've got you've got two steps here we're making a change to a so each item WPID is a number. Each item's WP. Did I did I make the? I might have screwed up the data type. Hold on. Uh, users. WPID is a number on user. Of course, enrollments. It's a text. Dang it. <laughs> um. That shouldn't matter though, because you can convert. But that confuses things. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, wait, I could re-upload these. Yeah, this needs to be a number. It's gonna screw things up. And then app data. WPID. Oh. Wait, the checkbox is to the right of it. It's so confusing. Okay. Yeah, so this WPID is obviously empty. 
But if I were to take all of these, and it doesn't matter, it's all test stuff. I can delete that, I can upload. This is a course enrollment. Where am I? Yeah, course enrollment. Upload, course enrollments, pick a file, course enrollments, Matthew. So, okay, so this is it. I'm literally doing what I showed you. Course title is a course title. Lessons completed because it's a list. There's only one in it. Course is the course name. Lessons available is the name, delimiter there. Lessons completed. Name. WPID, WPID. So this is, this is now a number, not text. Validate. Upload. All right, so the WPID is now a number field populated with a number. Okay, and the that's the same that matches. It's also a number in the user table. Why? Hold on, I don't think that. So the the thing to change. Can you can you delete? Uh, back this expression out because there's something missing here. So go to just go search for a user and then put the first item because this can only evaluate to one thing because we're only making a change to a thing. And then and then you see now now you have the uh, You see how you lost the, the, the field to change now? Yeah, well, so the first item's course enrollments, right? No, because you're just, you're just, you're changing a user. You're changing one user. Yeah. Right? So, and you're not going to change the, you have to find the user first and then you change the actual field in the step that's below this. So just search for user first item. Let's just do that first. Search for users. And then the first item. First item. All right, now you see where it says change another field? OK. And then we're going to say uh. the course completed, set list. Yep. Yeah. And it would be set list or add list. I guess it doesn't matter because if it would be ad list if there were already existing entries, but because there isn't, it, we could just do set. I think both would work in this case. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and now you're doing another search. You're querying. You, these are two separate queries. You're you're searching the course enrollment now, right? You're searching the course enrollment data type for a matching WPID. Yes. So do a search for again. Course enrollments where WPID equals this user's course or this user's WPID. Exactly. Yup. <laughs> hey. So that will give you a list of the Yeah, that 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 that, that will give you the list that you're looking for. Now, this should work only one time for the first user. Mm -hmm. um, and we can initiate this one of two ways. We can initiate it from the data tab, or we can initiate it, like you kind of said before, like as a button from the front end. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose it makes more sense to do it from the data tab. But I'm not I'm not married to either way. Both ways work, honestly. So I, you tell I me. know how to do it from the from the front end, so I don't think right. I've done it from the back. Do do data. it the way do it the way you know it. Alright, so that can work. So if I were to do that, then I would just have a I have an admin dashboard page. 
I can just add a button. <laughs> Uh, API workflow button. An API workflow is clicked run API workflow. Schedule API workflow. User course enrollment. Schedule date, current date, time, WP ID. All right, so this is I the only part. That. Yeah, I think you don't need that parameter yet. You don't need it at all. Yeah. Yeah. If we set when we set up the recursion, you might need it, but you may just say like this this is okay, I'll just do it this way. Um but let's let's make sure that this this works. All right. That's that's all you need to do. If you hit that, that means the first user in the database should get populated with their completed courses. Um is it blank the first user? Um, uh, depends on how it's searching. I'm curious if I go to users, is, is this the first user test nine? No, that's the most recent one. So how would it, what's, what is one? <laughs> how does it, it just... the bot, like how many users do you have in there? Only like 17? 17. Okay. So test one at user.com. That will be the first one. Oh wait, no. There's, there's more. There's more. It'd be run as admin. Run as admin, and my guess is that it won't find any. Here, maybe if I specify, uh, search for users. Uh, users filtered or sorted. Sorted by uh, creation date, descending, yes. Do all of the users in your database right now have a WP ID? No. Okay, so I think maybe that's what you want to constrain on. Oh, there you go. Sorted by WP ID. It's not really a sort. It's yeah, more like... Filter. Well, you could just add a constraint to the search. It's a little more efficient than doing a, uh, a, uh, gotcha. doing the filter. Isn't empty. Search for users first. Okay. That, that'll give me one of them. Come back here. Do, do, do. Hit the API workflow. Did you hit it already? No, but I'm gonna. Do me a solid. Yeah, just check check with the first. Um, yeah, go to no. user. Yeah, okay. So it should be one of these that's going to play with. I'll put this here. Do this. Uh, that's not gonna... So, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. course enrollment. So it'd be one of these boxes. Yeah, it should be the one. I, it's in the, you know, like the, the, it's in order of created date starting from the most recent on top. But, uh, what's, do you know what the first record that has a WP ID in is? It'd be this one here. Okay. So that's the one we would expect to populate. Martin's one. It looks Martin, like Jack the last one. Name. Yeah. Jack okay. one. All right. Roll the dice. Oh, I got to refresh. Hey, hey, freaking worked. There we go. Okay. And, and now, now we can test. Watch this. We can run as. Wait, how do I? How do I... Yeah. So it'd be run as this one. And if I go, oh. It goes to the WordPress because I screwed up my domains. Uh, those versions as my account. And now I should have all those course enrollments because I'm not enrolled. How do I run it as? Oh, I can't do this because I screwed up my domains. Oh, really? you can't you can't get to the uh, to the preview. It's taking yeah, me to WordPress. 
Cause I, cause I, I changed it early. I shouldn't have done this. How do I change app domain? Or just be. You should be able to preview it now, and it'll uh, it'll it give you the bubble app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think as long as it's not in there, it, it should point to the bubble app. Yes. No. Look, see, that's my like. Ac this is WordPress. <laughs> but no, watch. Ready? I can do this. I can do. Dot bubble apps. Dot io. <laughs> Oh man. There it is. Am I logged in? Oh wow. Yes, I am. My account. And I should have All right, where are my course enrollments? Was it this t test one user? Yeah, this is the We one. are logged in as the right person, it looks like. It should, it should show up here. You want to check the repeating group on the on that page? See what's going on there? Course enrollments. Florida. What? Oh, wait, there's a, how many? Are there? There's one, two, three, four, five. But there, whenever you add a course enrollment, it should. Hold on, I may, I may have jumped the gun here. I'm kind of lost as to what we're, we're expecting right now. There should be a list here, because the course enrollment becomes, uh, here, one sec, let me go to my account, and that um, repeating group active, so this right here, is okay so this repeating group is the user current users course enrollments filtered by the status is not complete which means it could be empty right um which means that i mean uh, if I it, did filter and i refresh does it show up yeah there they are Okay. okay. So, so it was the filter that was removing it. So I guess I need when I when I had that filter in there, the status has to be present. There has to be something there, I guess. Um, it it, it just has to not be complete. Um, is is with that expression? That, that's what I needed. <laughs> I, that wasn't clicked. Oh, got it. Watch this. No! Well, what guess, what is the actual status of those courses, though? Are they marked as complete in the... Oh, wait. No, were they complete? No, I'm not that... I, I, I could be that dumb. Users, course, enrollments. Uh... All so they're all empty, right? Um, no, freaking status is complete. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> That's all it I was. It because they're all completed. I'm sorry. Yeah. So then, if they're incompleted, if I remove the filter, yeah, there they are. Okay. Yeah, if, if they have complete, then they show up here. And this is where they would be anyway. Okay, so it's working better than I was expecting. I, yeah, it so, so that, it seemed like that filter shouldn't have even been there because you want the ones that were complete. It should be is complete, maybe. Like, is equal to complete. 
right? Because you're in the completed tab right now. No, so I was in the active tab and I wanted it to show up. Oh, the okay. Were completed because duh, they're completed course enrollments that ah, came from right. the whole thing. So yeah, so this worked. It worked from the start. I just didn't find it. Okay, that's cool. So this these are the courses that the API workflow added. Yeah. Now let's go back and just kind of finish that thought process out because what the logic that we built will work for, it's going to keep doing the same because it's, it's only querying the first user. Uh, mm -hmm. What we can do, this is where I was trying to like kind of go before. Now we can just say, so you know how you have one constraint that says w, the WP, uh, go click where it says search for users. So sorry, on the thing okay. to change yep, yep. all right so you see how wp id isn't empty mm -hmm. now if by the by just this constraint it's going to it's going to keep picking up the same one it's going to keep picking up jack one but if we add another constraint here that says and course completed is empty it's going to pick up the next one because you've already filled jack's course completed okay does that logic make sense I see. Yeah. So if the WP ID isn't empty and the uh, uh, course enrollments is empty, that we want to capture that record. We want that record, and we want to process that record until there's no more left. Exactly. But but what if that user? Because I have a list of users that. But that there, if a user doesn't have a course, then it, what happens? If a user does not, when you when you say a user doesn't have a course, do you mean that there is no record of a WPID in the course enrollment list? Correct. Then it will just skip it because there is nothing to. Uh, but the there, first item, it'll keep going back to that same one. Oh yes, no, you're right. You're right. And there will be nothing to fill it, and it'll keep going, and it'll not be to fill it, and it'll keep going, and it'll nothing to fill it. Like it needs to. It, so I'm curious because isn't there a way to do it where um, there's like a number? Yeah, the, you want to do a loop. Yeah, I. So, yeah, so I did it in one of these things where you do it the amount of times. Yep, 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 yep. We could do a loop. Because then you can just search for the number of users, do that many loops, and that's it. Let's do it, baby. And then if and then you're not stuck on an infinite loop, it'll just pass to the next one, pass to the right. next one. That 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 seems like it makes more sense because each one's got its own attention, and then then it moves on. Let's do it. All right. So thanks to change. Da, da, da. Now we are going to need to add that parameter in all likelihood yes we're gonna need to because we're gonna need to pass that number through um so we're gonna need a few parameters here let's first go okay we're first gonna do a add a counter here and that's a number and add a parameter that's going to be a list of users And then that will be user, and then is a list array. Perfect. All right, so now we got to do this a little bit differently, right? So we're not going to do the search on the back end. We're going to pass a list of users into the back end from the front end. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do, because we're going to iterate using this loop. So let's go back to step one here. And we're going to say search for users item number counter. counter yes does it accept that perfect all right and get rid of the get uh can you click on where it says search uh sorry the uh, the thing to change search the user search i think we can get rid of both of these yeah i don't think we want to be yeah because each just each user exactly we want it to process every record, regardless of whether the WPID yep. is yeah, in there. Yeah, for every user. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, then course enrollment set list. I think this logic does not change, right? 
That stays yeah, the same. Yeah, because if there's nothing, then there's nothing. And if yeah. there's 10 courses, it adds 10 and it moves on. All right, perfect. So now let's set up the the recursion, the loop. Hit click here to add another action. Oh, we schedule API workflow? Yep. I know that one. What is that? Schedule API workflow on a list. This essentially does that for you. Uh, like it does the loop kind of for you, but it only is efficient on records that are less than a thousand uh, or tables that are less than a thousand. In all honesty, we probably could have done it this way um, because your user list is small. But um, I, we've already gone down this path. I don't know if we want. Well just... Yeah, we yeah. might as well just finish it out. Counter is uh, do a search. For, I yeah, there you go. Users count, right? Well, kind of the. This is where the counter makes the change from one to two, or in three to four. So you have to you have to take the the counter that came through the as a parameter and add one to that. So we're not oh. counting the users here. We're counting the users on the front end initiated by that button and then that number gets passed through so, so that button adds the number and then so that would be the uh counter minus one plus one plus one yeah because you want to go right. item one item two item three so counter plus one meaning but if there's a thousand users that would be a thousand and one. Um, Wouldn't it no. Be a thousand minus one nine ninety nine minus one nine ninety eight minus one nine ninety seven, and then. Oh, I guess that could work too if you're going from the top of the list. Um, I just I never just, done it that way. I just remember, I because I did. What did I do here? Yeah, number of states minus one. This is this is I I do something to add a bunch of approvals. So it's the number of states is the number of states, and then minus one. Only when the number of states is greater than zero, you run it. So then when it hits zero, you it stops running. Oh, you're like a um, you play dice. <laughs> you're like you're like the uh, how do you call that the uh, the one that always bets against the odds. Is that you is do, that sketchy? yeah? That, no, it's just an interesting way to think about it. Like the if your approach works, it works. It's just it's just funny that you that you you thought to do it that way. It's a, it's unusual. It's an it's an oh, unusual wait, okay. way to approach so it. Okay, so for what you're saying is you want your number of states to be no. So for you, <laughs> you're saying the counter should be counter plus one, and then it ends when the counter equals number of users. Uh, equals. Counter is equal to for users count, right? Um, well, when you they, don't have to. Uh, right, plus let, one. Hang on, let's let maybe let's do the front the the front end part of this first because I think that'll be clear where the the where it starts. Uh, let's do the yeah. Let's let's figure schedule that button that you have on the front end. Oh, I'm already there. Here, yeah. This button is start at workflow, schedule API. So that's just going to be a one. Counter is one. Mm -hmm. And the number of, and the list of users is going to be. Oh, I see. Do a search for all users. You don't have to keep querying this. This is one user list that gets passed to the back end, and then it's just there and it, it does its thing. Gotcha. All right. So now we so can go back. We have those. Yeah. That so now sense. we start at one, and every time that thing loops through, it's going to add one to the counter. So now you're getting item number two, item number three, item That's number four. Okay. Uh, da, da. You honestly, you the way that you were going to do it also works. You would have to know how many records are in the list, which you do. You just kind of did it the reverse way of 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 what we're doing now, which is again, it'll it'll I think it'll work. I don't see any reason why that would not work. It's just approaching it from a different way. Sure. 
Uh, list of user counter is list of users count. Right? Well, or, okay. Counter is not. Run it when the counter does not equal. Right? Well, okay. So the way that I'm thinking about this is not equal to the list of users count. So what would happen on that first loop? First loop counters at one. It'll find the first user in the list, run the workflow, and then add the counter right here. Right, but th this that that whole action that you're looking at right now is happening at, happening at one time. So you're going to have a counter that's going to be one in this first iteration, mm -hmm. and then is not list of users count, and that's going to be twelve. Oh, okay. No, I think I think that'll work. I think that'll work because then it's going to keep going until that condition is true. Until is, they equal each other. Until is not. Yeah, I think that works. I think that works. So it runs when the counter does not equate to the amount of users because when Jesus, you have man. <laughs> you just like think of things different. It's crazy, but it like no, it makes I, it makes this sense. This is really interesting. It, it makes <laughs> sense. Like everything you're saying is like I've never done it this way, but that makes perfect sense to do it that way. That's so funny. How how would you do it? it I would have just did counter is um is I think greater than user uh I think is I think I would have used a greater than here. Wouldn't would that not work? That would that would buy you some insurance in case somehow it skips over and keeps going forever. <laughs> the counter is greater. The, the counter has to be greater. Uh, the counter has to be greater than the than list, the of, list users. of users. Yeah, because every time you hit a user, it adds to the counter. And if you have a thousand users and the counter is at a thousand and one, you have your counter greater than your user value. Okay. Your amount of users you can you try have... can you try it your way though i'm really curious to see if that works too counter is not is not list of user counts so when that condition is, is... i mean that that re references a specific number yours references yours makes more sense actually because... i have to see if this works now we have to do it we yeah, have to no, do I it mean, your way whatever let's do it <laughs> but list of users here what is, what is this? You're just going to keep passing the same list of users through. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's yeah, perfect. Right, so this is this is the static number. This is the dynamic number. It's not even really a number. You've made it a number in your conditional on the bottom there, but it's really a list of users, and it has you have access to all of the information that that is that uh, all of the fields in the user table. Right. Okay. Cool. So I think we're good, right? I think so. Okay. Where's my data? I do this all the time. I click, I click. There they are. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Course enroll. So I want users. We'll do course enrollments. So curious because we set it to set list. I'm just gonna delete like a few of these, and it should replace them, right? Yeah, it should. This this test one should fill with more than that. Yes. Right, because so, it should just set this, and then just it should fill all of these in, and it shouldn't fill any of these in because none of these have WP IDs. Yep. API. Oh, that scared me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. All right. Refresh. Okay. Refresh. Yes, yes. That looks good. And it replaced your. It replaced. Um. Yeah, it did. Jack one. Yeah. So th that would take probably an hour to go through. 1200 people, huh? You got 1200 people you're importing? Yeah, we not. Oh, know, but... we then we definitely did this the right way. We should have not we shouldn't have done the schedule API workflows list. I didn't realize you had that many users. Um I, it, maybe in not an hour, maybe like 
I, I want I say like 15 20 minutes I would say to get through that the ex- yeah, I don't care it's time I don't need to spend <laughs> yeah it's the expensive part of that operation is the search on the uh on the course requirements matching up that WPID that's the that takes the most the most performance suck for this this operation which that we're is a tons of mental performance too so I'm all for <laughs> oh yeah it's it's if it's hard on your brain it's probably hard on the computers too that's all, it's, all right, so we this is exactly what you I think we're setting out to do, right? Did we? Exactly. Uh, and then this principle applies to the other things too. So, um, I, after this, I need to. What was it? I need to go to lesson activities, and then I need to uh, set the list where the WPID is user one's WPID because. Uh, every piece of content that's exclusive to a user is a course enrollment and a lesson activity. Mm-hmm. And that contains their certificate data, it contains everything. Everything else, like the course itself, anyone pulls from the same information. So these two things give me my users. And that's, that's a beautiful way to do it, bro. Yes. And that- and that is the same same exact logic. You can literally use the same workflow and just change it because you only have to do this once, right? Yeah. Yeah, once yeah, they're yeah. in and they're associated, we're good. All right. All right, Rando. Another back end workflow solved. We did it. I love it, dude. This is good, man. <laughs> Ugh. Those uh those loops are always kind of uh they're, they're always a little bit you, like think I think I think the hardest part is honestly thinking through the logic you know like once you have exactly in your head like how it should work you actually like it was really smart for you to write that down first like yeah how you wanted the logic to work because that really helped like help me understand exactly what you were doing um I find that when I write things down first and then I try to like it, it's easier for me to map out and bubble if I write it down by hand first yeah, no, I I agree. I even <laughs> I even took screenshots of the three data types, brought them into Illustrator, and drew arrows to like say that needs to go there, that needs to go to visualize what's happening. Um, and it got way too complicated in Illustrator. I literally just but I but using that I realized that those are ultimately what I need. And at first. I've been kind of preparing to be like, I'm just launching this thing cold. If people need their certificates, email me. And now I'm like, literally, if I if I didn't take the almost day to process through everything that takes that what this takes, it's well worth the day it took to get to the point where no, I can do a clean import of all of my existing user activity. And then launch this thing, and hopefully people can just resume. I mean, that would be great, right? And then you don't have to worry about people having to recreate themselves every every year when they want to recertify, right? Well, I mean, that, that that's already everyone's waiting to, like, buy courses. And the ones who really want to buy email us, and we tell them to create a new account, and it's sketchy. Um, but I need – and that's another thing is I need to find those people, put their WP ID from their first account, and match it to their new account so that they all end up in the same new account so that their two accounts turn into one and bubble. Just gotcha. be a lot of Excel surgery to prepare. But once it's in and it's accepted, I run the workflow, do my associations, and dude, that's awesome. God. <laughs> I love when you get happy. Oh You're always gosh. happy after you finish one of these things. It's well, it's it's like big picture it's one of those things I've, I've invested so much in this project and to like not do it well or finish strong is like it just ah oh, it would suck do you like, have it sorted out with the certificate yet um is it i forgot if you said that does it email them the certificate after they're done or are you still working on that part of it that i um yeah when a course is completed um, I can trigger an email. I send, I do emails through SendGrid because bubbles are non-existent. It's not even bad. They just they send text. That's it. I'm yeah. 
I guess they're not even trying because there's other options. Why even bother? So, um, yeah, it's been great sent the email. I, I still haven't fully fi uh, finalized that. The one thing I will need to do, which could be another stream, is being able to. I have a PDF. I, basically, I turn an, a group into a PDF, and that's their certificate. Nice. So it's a pop up. When they click view certificate, it's a pop up, and it shows all the text. And if you hit print or say or download the certificate, it references that specific group per specific pop up, and creates a PDF downloadable of the contents of that group. How the hell did you do that? Is that a plugin? It's a plugin. Yeah. Oh man, so, that's sick. dude, I, I know plugins, man. That's that's all I know from WordPress is plugins. So. I'm, there's not as many with Bubble, but th there's enough. Um, you, uh, yeah, you told me. Well, that, that's one thing. And then wait, that, we were talking about a Bubble plugin now, right? Not a WordPress plugin. It's a Bubble plugin, yeah, and that nice. that that creates a PDF from a group. Group. Now, Pop what up. I want to do is take that PDF because it only stores in the browser. Does I guess you could save it to the database, which would take up a lot of space, but every time somebody clicks there uh to get their certificate i don't want it to like because currently that's what it's doing it's saving pdfs to my wordpress database and it's filling up with pdfs but um i want to be able to email that pdf without me saving it to save space right yeah like i want to email them a copy of their pdf i want to email them a copy of a group on their account page Gotcha. And then I guess at any time, like if they needed to go back, they could always pull that pop up up. And yeah, then but people send like to email. just have it in their email. So they can just yeah. search for that course completed and it's an attachment. Yeah, I was thinking if they like delete the email or lose it or something or lose access to it. All the time. And that's why it's stored in my account. And that's why I, I, I want to spend the time doing this because I know people are going to need their stuff because they may not have. Just having good record keeping is a good thing to do in general. So uh, that's, that's a good integration. I actually like to see how that plays out. Yeah, if you want to jump, if, I mean, you know, have a crack at it, of course, first. But yeah, if you no, want, no if, you want to, but if you want to have a thing, yeah, we could we could check that out too. That'd be a pretty interesting one to work through. I've never done that. Yeah, no, I'm. I'll keep you in the loops. Uh, I'm with this. I think I well. It's just how, how far to perfect do I want to go, right? Do I need that to launch? Should I spend the time with that to launch? You know, it's, it's those things that I'm at. I'm just like, I don't know. But I need I need past data to launch, so I'm starting there. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> the struggle of like, oh, we could just do this one last feature. Dude, this one last feature. Yeah. You're, just, you're sitting on this diamond that's never been released to the world because it's not perfect yet yeah it should um, go on forever yeah so i i may release and then do that um i mean i i was planning on releasing by december but honestly that like i i did five weeks straight in bubble and we caught up towards the end of that and i got m a lot of what i have now done then and then everyone got sick. Like my wife just is getting better after like almost five weeks straight. God like, damn. You can imagine. So um the baby got sick, had a seizure and Oh my god, really? It was that it was serious. A fever, from a fever, which apparently makes it not a big deal. But you know, when baby turns blue and he's shaking, it's just like, I don't wanna ever see this again. So life got heavy. Of course, bubbles the last thing on your mind when you're surviving. But we're back to. I'm just trying to push this thing out, and I, we're we're in a good spot now. So. <laughs> uh, that's terrifying, man. I'm glad to hear everyone's doing all right. Yeah, everyone's good. I it, it, not, I wish I could say it was his first, but it's happened before. And uh, but he's a champ. He because he he's breathing through it, right? So it's not. Like the the only time it's bad is when they don't breathe, but he was breathing. We were making sure he was breathing, but it sucks. It's like it's one and a half. Yeah, 
to go through that crap. But um, yeah, that's that's my context behind <laughs> this thing. And at, at the end of the day, everyone who does this, it's like a part of their life, right? You can't. This can't just be a job. It can't just be a. I mean, it's Monday night and you're doing a stream about bubble because it's <laughs> yeah yeah you re i think you really gotta love it to keep coming back to it or there's a reason that i keep coming back to it i would say you know like yeah there's there's plenty of other things to do but honestly like this i i, I the, the stream feels like you know like there's it, it doesn't feel like effort right i jump on here and i'm like all right we're gonna me and randa we're gonna catch up we're gonna solve a problem you know what i mean like that's not something that's so like i don't it doesn't feel like work you know yeah the editing part that freaking kills me i've been so lazy with the editing i have yeah. to like i i know like when we chatted i i was talking about like the short form content and i was doing the shorts for a while um but i suck at video editing and i just don't know i can't get myself into a routine of creating short form content creating a thumbnail getting the right you know name for the video i just I, I haven't found that discipline uh, to do it. I can get on the stream every day and do this for, I don't it doesn't matter how long, but I, I can't get into the discipline of doing the short form stuff. It's work. It sucks. Yeah. It's, it feels it's like hard. work. I, mean, I know I have to do it, you know, but it's just. You, you either get in line to find someone to be an editor for YouTube content, or, I mean, I've heard people have some pretty decent success with Fiverr with that kind of stuff. Um, I actually used Fiverr for some JavaScript customization of a plugin I use in Bubble. And uh, it's, a, it's a photo capture plugin and it offers the opportunity to upload or use the webcam and I needed to bypass the upload part because I only want to only want the option of using a webcam and um 17 bucks and the guy just took over my site pasted some javascript and it worked and i was like this is the best 17 bucks i've ever spent oh my god that's all it was he, he only charged you 70 bucks i thought you were gonna say like 70 bucks an hour even that would have been a deal 17 bucks well oh, plus man. plus fees it might have been like 21 bucks or something but having spent i think i've spent fifteen thousand dollars on wordpress custom code just uh, just just plug in customizations in wordpress and i'm throwing it all out to go to bubble <laughs> jesus christ man and it's worth it it's yeah a, i mean it's a, i know so much like it's one of those things I, I don't know if i told you about the life university idea where like if you went to college you can pay somebody else in advance for information that it's your job to internalize and use in the future right that's the, the, the ideal or you don't go to a formal university thus opting for life university where you have a spontaneous tuition bill that you weren't ever planning for but when it comes, it's up to you to see if it's worth the money and you learn something from it or you pay the bill and you don't absorb the content. So that's how I see whenever I get screwed over in the situation or I lose a fat chunk of change on a bad decision. Yep. That's a life university tuition payment. Three grand here, four grand here to kick in the nuts but it is way cheaper than college still <laughs> I, I hear you man i mean it's actually you know like the first soiree i had it to app development was with these developers from india and i, I did about the same thing about 15k about 15k um and that was just for the development side i also had this stupid ass idea that i needed to like patent the software idea that I had before I even like tested it or talked to anybody about it. And that was another like 20 grand. So I was like, I, my life university freaking tuition was probably about 35 K first, like three years that I was doing this, which amounted to, you know, 
experience. So it, but then I'm not saying anything useful. To college, and if you have a thirty-five thousand dollars education, you're at the bottom of the bucket. Like <laughs> if you don't have a six-figure education, like you're not like you. You got a cheap one. <laughs> I have that too, though. Well, I went. I went to CUNY. Oh, you went. Where would you go? I went to Brooklyn College. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Queens College for undergrad in psychology, and then I did uh, my graduate degree at um Brooklyn College. Here I am assuming you're one of the the self-made bubblers that went off the beaten path, but you you left the beaten path. I left the beaten path. I think that's the way to look at it, right? Like I was yeah. on a very like clear career career path in HR and I was like I hate this. I don't like what I'm doing. Left turn out of this and you know, but you know, it's kind of the same like I think a lot of what I learned throughout that those 10 years really kind of set me up for success as a freelancer because there's so much client stuff that I learned doing that. So there's, you know, some of those skills definitely transferred over. Did I need to spend 10 years doing that? Did I really need to go to college for what I'm doing now? Probably not. I f could have probably figured this stuff out, but I'm still kind of grateful for like the things people taught me along the way. And, you know, so like, I, I don't, I don't discount doing that. Like I had to go that way. You know what I mean? Like that, that, totally. that's, I mean, I, I was talking to a girl who works at Chick-fil-A and she's like, this is the worst job ever. It's like, okay, everyone has their jobs they don't like, right? And she was telling me how her mom made her take away her two week notice because life sometimes has things that are hard. And she's a young girl, so like, you know, she just wants to make a lot of money and not work. But um, we all look at those things that we did that we hated and it's like, I'm so grateful. Cause it's not forever. It's literally, it's not, it's like a season. Fucking then, feels like it though, when you're in I, it. it. Feels yeah. like it's never gonna end. But it's wild. Like the amount of times where like my peripheral, I can't fathom anything being like, like how do I get out of this? And then like fast forward to right now and none of that's there anymore. I'm, I'm only 30. So like, yeah. I, I, I could double my age and still be young. <laughs> like, people need to chill out. I don't know. It's a good way to think about it, man. It's a good way to go through life. You know Gary Vee? You heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, he, he that, that's his thing where he's like, okay, I can double my life, double my age and still be alive. That means if I started at zero right now, I could get right back to where I am right now. <laughs> and he, I saw him say a quote that chilled me out a little bit. It was like, I don't know why people who are younger than 40 are worried about getting, you know, like getting things, uh, making it like now. He, he said it a certain way, like anyone under 40, like you still have like half your life to 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 get where you're going. Right. Like let it happen when it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, that, that I definitely that. Uh, I heard a few times where he was like, yeah, just, 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 but he's also got like the very hustle, you know, like he's always like, you got to work 90 hour work weeks and all that shit. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't always agree with but that. What stuff. I love about it is he directly says like, if you can be genuinely happy working a day job and coming home to your family and just being happy that way, you've achieved success, but that's different for everybody. And for me, I'm just not that person at all. And for me to feel successful, I have to do these 90 hour workers. I have to be a salivating wolf with blood on my face, just going to the next thing. And that's just who he is, but mm. he doesn't crap on people who aren't him. And that's the big thing that most people don't, it, it took me a long time to realize. Like I, I went to a high school reunion way back when and saw a, a friend who still worked at um, like a, a pretty average job and didn't want to leave it. Like, I think they were like, I think it was at a grocery store, but like it was like kind of a higher ish up position. I'm like, wait, so you're okay with just working in a grocery store the rest of your life? Yeah. And I offended her. And looking back, I'm like, yeah, I did. Because she's happy. Like, I wouldn't be happy doing that. Why, why impose my standards on someone else's 
like it's not even like how they think it's like who they are yeah <laughs> you're if you're if you have that fire you're doing yourself a disservice not fanning it and if you your fire looks different where it's like a steady burn it's a constant and you you work in the same place and you can manage a you have tons of fun on the weekend your relationships are like flourishing like that's a good life like, you're not successful like that's, yeah, that's it, totally it, success it's a good life so, I, I i dig that no I, I yeah i think i think the the takeaway there is like don't expect everyone to match your own intensity right like if you're just mm-hmm, yeah you know like every i think everyone defines success a little bit differently you know and, and the priorities change too you know like think about like bubble takes bubble is on the forefront of my mind all the time because i don't have anything you know obviously family stuff but you know like i don't have a baby to worry about you know what i mean so i can i can spend my night streaming five days a week because i don't have a a a kid you know so like this if 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 i had a kid that wouldn't be the case like my priorities would completely shift so i mean everyone's got their own everyone's got their own thing their own path yeah no man but I do applaud how consistent you've been, man. I do check in here and there on your streams, and um, I, I, if I have an hour to burn, I'm burning it in bubbles, so I'm not watching the whole thing. But I appreciate um, that. But yeah, dude. I mean, I, I love, love what you're doing. I love what you bring to the table. I mean, I, I appreciate. Well, I look back on this process, and I have a handful of people, but you especially, being like like the the one who like like when my kid tries to climb on something actually climb off something he tries to go off the bed and his feet aren't on the ground he freaks out he's holding on to what he's at and he's stuck and he's like stuck at 90 degrees his butt's like kind of hanging over and he, he's like grabbing on the blanket and he, he's like this far from hitting the floor but he doesn't know but he's freaking out yeah and the second i just like put my hand on his back i don't even do anything he feels the confidence to let go and go down <laughs> nice and literally, that's literally how i felt so many times in this process where it's like i am tear i don't even know what's next i don't even know what the next move is and then it's like like you could even with this this is not that hard i'm like yeah you're right this is it and I, beforehand i'm like i might launch without any course information at all and do this thing cold oh my god i'm gonna do and it's like dude it's you're literally that far off the ground (laughs) that's awesome that's good to hear man that makes that makes it worth doing this shit you know what i mean much appreciated hey um all right man uh uh i got a um yeah i got a a, an api challenge this wednesday we're doing a we're doing a competition there's like four people jumping on we did one before that was pretty fun um so check in if you can we're doing it at around about seven Wednesday. Um, yeah, Wednesday. No, I'm sorry. It's gonna be a little later than that. It's gonna be like set like nine thirty. We got someone in India jumping on, so we're trying to make him uh, work with his time zone. at okay. the morning, morning for him. So check it out if you can, man. Do, do something in the in the chat. I like seeing people just like dicking around in the chat a little bit. Cool. Yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'll put in my calendar. See if I can jump on. All right, Randall. Appreciate it, man. Always a good chat. Appreciate everything, man. We'll get we'll keep in touch. We'll do, man. All right, peace.